Stay encouraged. Nah, nah, nah. In times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be strong. Yeah. I don't be making wishes, I be saying prayers. Oh. In my secret place, I close my eyes. Can't tell me he's not right there. Be strong and have good courage. Oh. He got you, so why is you worried at all? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a lot that's on your mental. But everything you go through, you can get through. Be strong and have courage. He's with you. Yeah. You don't need no wood, no stones. We not pagans no more. You can go straight to the source. Yeah. Be strong enough, good courage. Oh. What is you worried for? You got one life, ain't no sequel. Don't miss the kingdom. Hey. In times, y'all want me to rap? Let's get it. Why worship creation when we got a creator? Bro, we still alive, it's got to be favor. I mean, we still here when they tried to erase us. These Hebrew spirituals is not entertainment. Statutes, commandments, and laws, you know about that? Faith in Hamashiach, board the ark of you out back. And I ain't got it down packed, but if I fall, bet I bounce back. With the Ruach, can't do this without that. Remember Joshua, I'm talking Jericho back when the walls was up. When the Father with us, who strong is us? Herbs, potions, candles, not enough. Obedience is more than any sacrifice you'll offer up. Look. So when all the frankincense and incense are gone, are you strong as before? Go get it straight from the source. He's all that you need. Be strong enough, good courage. Oh, what is you worried for? You got one life, ain't no sequel. Don't miss the kingdom for nothing or nobody. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. That's that's uh, uh that caution sign up there is on purpose. Yes. That caution sign is on purpose. We gotta just hold on, y'all, a little while longer, keeping his word, keeping his commands. Yes. We are living in the last days, and I know y'all heard that. Your grandmother said it. Your great grandmother said it. The revelation is revealing itself. Yes. Prophecies are unfolding. And we're getting closer. Yeah, we so just, just got to hold on. Yeah, we. Shabbat Shalom, Mama. We leaving that Shabbat sign there for just a little second there, just so you know when you come in. Caution. We are living, in fact, in the last days. Shabbat Shalom, John Ville. We'll make sure we show that, that caution sign again. Now y'all can see our faces. Shabbat shalom to you all. We love Hello. you. Love Ahava. You all. Ahava to you all. Hope y'all are having a wonderful Shabbat so far. So far, everything is going good. We still in our Feast of Dedication Hanukkah. Yes. And every day we have been doing something where TGCB has been coming together. We've been lighting the candle together. We've been sharing what we plan on dedicate, being more dedicated to in this uh as we come up on our new year, well, our new year, Hebrew New Year starts in March. Uh, the latter part of March, uh, first week going into April. So it's the very end of March going into April. That's when our new year starts. But as for the world, their new year starts 
on the 1st of January. So we just been reflecting throughout this week on what we all personally want to be more dedicated to. And it's been wonderful things. So we got how to dedicate ourselves better to the Father. Yeah. So we got a couple of more days of uh, uh, dedication going on. So I'm excited about that. So if y'all do me a favor, please share the feed. Share the feed. Yes, share the feed. You never know who could just benefit from the truth, who's crying out, sick of religion, sick of all the, the traditions of man, yeah. and just want to get back to a state with the Father that is organic, yep. that is allowing them to have burdens lifted and light revealed. Sorry, we don't I'm have to suffer more. through these dark times, these hard times alone. Right. And something as small as sharing a feed may do more than you could ever know. Yes, it definitely could be more than you ever know. We just got to hold on, y'all. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. And that's a good thing for us believers. Good thing for us followers. That means the prize is on its way. Yes. Nothing that we're going through, no present suffering shall compare to the glory to be revealed. And we just got to hold on. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to be set free from this wickedness. Y'all yeah. do me a favor. Share the feed. When you come in, please share the feed. Share the feed. Share the feed for us. Today we're going to, uh, we're just going to talk today. Hey, y'all, can y'all shut that door? Honey bear? Sorry, y'all. Y'all know we at home, and so we hear the noise. We hear the honey bear. So, honey, stop. Hey, Jeremiah? Oh, I think they're back in the room. Okay. Okay. We apologize. <laughs> Hey, I want to know who on. It's not letting me see who's jumping on, but to those that are on, Shabbat Shalom. I see Mama on, Johnville on. It's more people on. It's just not letting me see, but Shabbat Shalom to you that are on. We appreciate it. If you can, please share. Put some hearts in the chat. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pray. Break this thing off some more. What music would you like to put on that we can pray to, and then we'll go forth. And this here. We we'll allow the Father to have His way. Give me something that'll touch our, uh, but that won't get won't get us banned. Cause you know how Facebook man love to to ban stuff and mute stuff for us. So um, cool. That one. Yeah, that's good. We are gonna pray in on them. All right. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Shabbat, shalom, shabbat Shalom, Jared. Shabbat Shalom, my man, my Aki. For those of y'all hear me say these words, Aki and Akoti. Akoti is sister, Aki is brother in Hebrew. That's how you say that. So, y'all don't think I'm calling you something out your name. I promise I'm not. How <laughs> about y'all? We thank you. Thank you. Take us out of ourselves and place us in the rims of your spirit. Yes, Father. If there's anything in our love of our heart that's not like you, we ask that you remove it. On today, let your Ruach Hokodesh, your Holy Spirit, let it speak. We decrease so that you will increase in all things. Yes, Shamoris and I may be up here, but don't allow the people to see Johnny and Shamoris or pastor and co-pastor. None of that matters. What matters is they see you, Abaya. Let your will be done. Let thy will be done, Abba. Free somebody on today. Open up somebody's ears to hear. Drop the scales from their eyes so that they may see Torah and they may see in the Ruach, the Spirit. Help us to understand that when you speak Emet, truth, allow us to implement it. Even if we don't fully understand how, allow us to act and let your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, let your Ruach HaKodesh, your Spirit of Wisdom, guide us. Without you, we're nothing. We're all seeking guidance. Your word told us to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. But the most important part is to seek ye first. We seek in you for truth. We don't want religion. We don't want games. We don't want denominations. We want Torah. We want Emet. And by our Imuna, our faith in your son, Yahushua, 
who is our Hamashiach, our Messiah. We know that we can accomplish everything that you set out for us. So today, uh, everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're on now or they're, whether they'll come on later, I speak as a Melech, a king in this Eris earth, that deliverance shall come forth on today and in all thy getting, get an understanding. They shall have understanding and Kokomo on today, wisdom. Amen and shalom. Amen and shalom. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I had to go in, y'all. I appreciate that. I just had to go in. Hallelujah. Can we pause that? Oh, yeah. Well, I can let it down. Yeah, yeah, you can pause it, so just in case. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, it couldn't pick up. I, I muted it real low, so it's all good. There we go. How y'all doing this morning? Somebody put in the chat. Let me know how you're doing. I don't care if you you know, yes. you're super excited, or if there's something going on and you need prayer, please put it in that, that chat. I want to know how you're doing, because uh, today, Shamoris and I, we are really uh, um, going to express from a point of how Father has groomed us and how we've learned so much throughout this transition, throughout this time of yeah. uh, walking in Torah. And we're so farther along than we were and we, last and we got year. A long ways to go. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got a long we ways to go. We don't want y'all to think for a second that we we got it all together. No, we are in need of of the Father and His <clears> continued <throat> revelation. Well, I'm talking about um, John, yeah. in a, in our lives, but we have come so far, and we know that He didn't bring us this far to bring us this far. Right. And we just want to open up and share with you all yes. um, that you may be encouraged. That you may be wiser and, and, and stronger today than you were yesterday and the days before. Mm -hmm. um, we know that some of you have shown up here more than once. So that means something is working in the inside of you. Yeah. It's not Jay and I. Yeah. You're back today because something resonated. And, and I believe, Jay and I believe, that that is the shofar sound of the Father. Because yeah. he says, my sheep know my voice. Right. And we know that the shofar is, a, is an alarm, is an awakening sound. For those that are in him, that are called according to his purpose and plan. And so we are a transparent uh, ministry, I should say. Yeah. We, we talk a lot about our mishaps. We talk a lot about uh, finding our way. And, you know, today is no different. We, everything that we talk about today, we absolutely can talk about it. Because guess what? We did it. Yep. And we, we were in it. Through it. Yep. We came through it. We're still finding our way. So this is not a righteous condemnation because there is no condemnation for those who are in Hamashiach. And we know that the Father has a timing for each and every one of us. Right. Um, I look back in uh, our Facebook mis uh, min uh, memories. Let me let me get that right. And man, 2018. Guess what we were doing. Preaching in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we was having Christmas. A, a Christmas party yeah. at a place of meeting. And, you know, and it was great fellowship. It was a lot of love. We had our Christmas tree up. We had all these things. And as I watched it, I was sitting here like, man, we was really into that thing, wasn't we? Yeah. And, and, and we knew that Christmas was not the birth date of Christ. <laughs> But we was like engulfed in that thing. And I and I know more than anything for Jay and I, it it really wasn't to serve these pagan gods and do these pagan rituals and that sounds like witchcraft because it is but we can exempt ourselves from it because we we put the name of the father on it right mm -hmm. we we start wrapping it up in love and, and the idea of fellowship and, and the good things that we can experience and the fun that we can have but it was so wrong y'all and the reason we know it's so wrong is because the word explicitly told us yeah. that's it that's it just the word told us that's how we knew it was wrong. So it didn't matter our intentions. It didn't even matter that we may have been ignorant to the pagan roots and the rituals that are associated with it. Uh -huh. You know, uh, Christmas <clears throat> had many names. Winter solstice, it was Yule. Yule Tide. And, uh -huh, Yule Tide and, and some other things. But we didn't, we didn't do that. Yeah. What we celebrated was the tradition of man. Uh, man it, you know, and so people don't think we just make it something up. I want to share that scripture there. Uh, well, Hamasha, is it a good time to share that? Well, Hamasha mentioned these very things. 
And uh, that very thing I'm talking about is in Matit Yahu. Mm -hmm. Matit Yahu 15 verse 9. Hold on, I want to give a disclaimer. No, go for it. Go for it. I just, you know, I'm going to get this disclaimer, but I, I want you to hear my sarcasm <laughs> in it. If you on here and you don't want the truth. Girl, you coming right out what I was going to say. Okay. You better hit the button now. Yeah. If you want to walk in ignorance, if you want to bypass yourself from the accountability that comes with truth, take your exit ticket. Yeah. We're Hear be. my sarcasm because I don't count a strange that you're on here today. So while I, I put that out there, I really am being facetious. I'm glad that you're here. Don't hit the button. Really, don't hit the button. Go ahead and get what the Father has for you today. I promise you it's going to be far better than anything in this world y'all we can <laughs> say that um because the father's really been dealing with dealing with us for years but i know last night he was dealing with me concerning this and i know this is the time where when we teach truth a lot of people jump off i don't want to hear that you ruining my christmas stuff you know we there y'all go Christ we're doing this. this we already got this tree up but what i understand is this when Hamasha told us to cry aloud, spare not, I really, and, and, and hear my heart when I say this, I really don't have time to worry about your opinion and how you feel when he told me to do. There is no man, no woman who outweighs the word of the father. And the father say do, your word don't outweigh what he say because at the end of the day, when I stand before him, I can't say, well, they told me this or they didn't like me that. That don't mean nothing. Y'all didn't create us. And guess what? Right. It's too easy to worry about me, myself, and I. Uh -huh. So when Jay and I got the truth of the word, and, and, and I'm telling you, it we felt lost. It's like, how do you get this? And it just knocks what you thought you knew um, just in a place of, of like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. We could have just tucked our tails and hid our face because we led a lot of people in the tradition of men. Right. We didn't know it. Y'all, we had a, a, a mantra, a motto to that, that we wouldn't, we wouldn't, uh, what was it, uh, break free from religion <clears throat> and, and into relationship. Right. So we kept pushing the relationship and getting out of religion and getting out of religion. And and I know we were speaking prophetically right to, to what our we, own yeah. calling, but at the same time, we didn't know how far we were in it because it comes down to the tradition of men. A lot of the things that we do is because we weren't just taught it. We observed it. We lived it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the hardest part about the change from truth is the separation from the traditions of men that bonded family. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, it is, it's, that's the most difficult thing because you have to... Can I read that real quick before uh -huh. you go in? Because I know you're going to have a point. Just to back up before we go in, and y'all, we're just having a discussion today, but we want to show you in your word that backs up everything, <laughs> girl, that's backing up everything that we say. Matityahu, Matthew chapter 15 verse 9 says, they worship me in vain. This is this Mashiach speaking now. Yahuwah, he's speaking now. Mm -hmm. They, meaning those who, who do it, all of us, we've done this one point in our life before we woke up the truth. They worship me in vain. Teaching traditions of men as if they were commandments. Ooh, that's a tough one. As if they were. So this is. And, and because we're on the Christmas thing, remember, y'all, we are in the season of the witch. It, yep. So the we thought Christmas has... was a commandment. No, it was never commanded. It's nowhere in the Bible that, it, it, I ain't, before I get on that, we're going to touch on that. But that yep. is not a commandment. So go ahead and go into what you yeah. were saying about the family. So I was just going to say, it, the hardest part of it was the separating. But remember, that's what the, the truth of the word does. It sets you apart. Mm -hmm. And so coming to family who has really grabbed itself together on the tradition of men like you know when i first had the conversation about this change it was well we we're not doing it for that we just come together as family we're coming together to, to show love and to give love and we take such joy in being able to give gifts to and seeing the kids response to it and you know and and so that aspect of it was like you, you can't it's not necessarily worshiping doing this pagan thing because we're not doing it in the name of this guy we're not doing it that and then we are putting it back to 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 jesus we are putting it back to god so it should be okay 
No, it can't be okay. Why? Because he explicitly said that it wasn't. So we can't wrap it up any kind of way and say, Father, let me give you this vile thing. Let me give you um, this, this pagan ritual that I have built a tradition with my family that I have implemented into my walk mm -hmm. and tell you to take it because I put your name on it. When he said explicitly not to do it. So when that part hit me, yeah, I love you. I do. I love you, family. I love you with all that's in me. It's unconditional. It is, but I, I, I love the father more. And I'm banking on the truth that he has put in Jay and I to be the generational curse breakers that brings our whole family into the truth because this, this earth is not the prize. He told us, do not put our treasures in earthen vessels. Correct. He is the prize. And if his commandment says, don't do this. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Y'all fall short of the glory every single day. We all do. The but the effort and the intention and the discipline has to be rooted on the intentional efforts of applying his word. Yeah. Applying his truth. Not ignoring it or grabbing ignorance. That's a form of rejection. Mm -hmm. And we know what he said about rejection. If you reject me before men, I will reject you before the Father. You deny me before men. Thank I deny you. Deny you before the Father. The same. Same thing. Same, yeah. So what we're doing today is out of a sincere love in our heart to reach those that the Father has put in our path at this moment to wake up, to dig deeper, to study a little bit more. Yeah, maybe we'll start a fire in, in it that burns in your soul, but we won't finish it. We won't extinguish it. You're just going to grab something today that's going to catapult you into, into another realm of glory in the Father. Yes, we celebrated Christmas. Yes, our children celebrated Christmas. They look forward to it. Man, we ate the ham. We had the dressing. We had everything you could think of. We, I ate chitlins. <laughs> I did. But here's the thing. Today's thing, as the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the set-apart spirit actually, reveals truth unto you, implement it. Because now we are without excuse. You know, y'all, if I can be honest, the hardest part about waking up to the truth and actually seeing it in your, your word, seeing it in your Bible, is wondering what your family and friends are going to say that's pretty much the hardest part from that point on because you know your spirit knows it's right but putting it into action is going to be the thing that you're going to fight against because your family is going to have questions your friends are going to have questions and the main question is on why and then you're going to hear a lot of people say well I ain't never heard my pastor mm -hmm. say that and all this. It's let, uncommon. Let me, let me tell you from a moray, a pastor's view. Your pastor is not your God. Your pastor is not your end all be all. And it should he lead you. And when you stand before the father in judgment, it's not going to be you and your pastor. Mm -hmm. It's going to be you. The more you wake up and you understand, ask the Father to give you the courage to keep your head held high and move forward in His event, His truth. Because yes, you are going to come up against people who are going to fight you on the fact that you no longer want to implement the traditions of man. And they're going to think you're caught in some type of cult or some type of new religion when in fact this free. is no cult this <laughs> is right. no religion this has always been in your word and you're gonna you're gonna want to show them where you get this from but don't let this break your heart or attack your heart because it can when you say listen i would like to show you and they say no, they don't want to know they don't want to learn they refuse and they want to stay on the point where they fight you that my pastor i ain't never heard nobody teach this y'all you got to let that go through one ear and out the other. Yes, it's going to hurt your heart. Yes, it's going to hurt your feelings. Yes, it's going to feel lonely. But I'd rather be lonely and on an island than to miss Father and Him say, Depart from me, for I never knew you. 
This this walk, this road of walking upright with him, it is lonely. Just remember when you first, um, as the church will say, God save, and you got so excited about giving your father, your name to Jesus. And, and we're going to we'll touch on that part because that's not his name. And I, I'll tell you why, but I'm not going to go into that yet. Yeah. When we first started Sorry. diving into that, we were so excited about giving our life and we're on this new journey. And people will always throw this sly remark, oh, that's good. Well, pray for me. You know, that that's good because they don't understand it. <laughs> but when you begin to get more confident in your word, you begin to get more confident in Yahuwah. You begin to get more confident in Abba. Abba means father in Hebrew. There is nothing or no one that can shake what you know because personally you have developed your relationship. A lot of pastors will stand up in the pulpit and say, study to show thyself approved. And when you do and you go and hopefully you should be able to go back to your leader and question them on it. If they get mad at you because you have a question that they don't have an answer to, you might want to look at that because as a leader, our job is to investigate it if we're going to lead the people right. Now, we don't know everything by all means. We don't know everything. But if we're going to lead the people, it should be our job to at least look into it to make sure that our people, they don't belong to us, but the people that Father called us to lead to make sure that they're going down the right path. And we can learn from them too. We don't Absolutely. know everything. He sends people. It, it, the word says iron sharpens iron. Everyone who comes in contact with you are not necessarily going to be lesser in wisdom or knowledge mm -hmm. than you. It, so, you know, this is where it's called an assembly. Right. It, it's called a, a set apart people, a kahel. It's not because it's supposed to be a person up here and looking down there. No, we, we have our high priest. Our high priest is Yahushua Ham Hamashiach. Yeah. That's our high priest. Hamashiach we means know the Messiah. We're, we're not, we don't have the ability to be high priest. That's done when we got the perfect lamb. We got the perfect lamb uh, uh, offering. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is encourage each other in the way of the Father. And this has been the biggest error, I'm going to say it, in church. Because the church does not build you up on the commandments of the Father. It doesn't build you up on the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. How many times have you gone into church and they're echoing the Ten Commandments? How many times are they bringing you back to weigh your morality against that part of the word? That left keep... out in Bible study, uh, vacation Bible school. You, <laughs> That's the last time you talk on that, vacation Bible school. And not school. only that, they keep you focused on the prosperity in the earth. Mm -hmm. Not on the the opportunity in the Father for for the prize that will come. It's not a, it, it has you wrapped up in the earth side of things. And not all churches do this by all means. Don't think if we bash you it where if right. you don't, then just just praise the Father that, that you is. are connected to people. That should give you more encouragement to talk to your leaders about this side of the coin. Mm -hmm. Because that means just like Jay and I, we were walking in it for a minute. Yes, we had to not only repent and turn away, we had to face the very people that we were leading this way in correction and humility and then trust that the Father would preserve them, right? Mm -hmm. What do we mean by that? A lot of pastors and a lot of leaders don't want to share this truth because A, they don't want to look like they didn't know it, they don't want to look bad, and B, they don't want to risk losing members because it's going to affect the dollar and it's going to affect the reputation of that ministry. But guess what? We can't be concerned about that. It was not our people to begin with. Not our people. And the word says that it is better to tie a millstone around your around neck, your neck. cast it into the sea before you make one of my little ones stumble. So we have to bring correction. We had to repent and turn away. And and part of that is coming to the very people who were infected, influenced, and led by our very words and behaviors. And then tell them what we come across, the truth, and give the Father the opportunity to do that inside work because it was never us. Yeah. And then trust that if they walk away, that that was the Father's plan. Who knows what it's going to do? Some people, you don't see the, the, the fruit from the tree. You only see the seed part. You plant it, they go on, they still blossom. You just don't, you're just not there to see it. But nonetheless... It is the commandments that have been forsaken 
in the play in, in the church. And that's why we get caught up on what feels good and not what the father instructs is good. So here we go. Let's come back to uh, uh, Christmas. We're just going to touch on that a little bit. Um, this is a season. And, actually, uh, yeah, you want to go into this one right that? here? Yeah. I had a couple scriptures on the commands. <clears throat> if I can give those real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the first one is, you know. If you want to unfold Torah, you can always start in Psalms 119. That's the Aleph through the top. Yeah. And every bit of it is Torah based. Okay. You can also go to. Always worst. But you know what I'm <laughs> saying? It, it, it puts the whole yeah. function yeah. in one space, uh, one place in the body. It preserved it. Um, But we want to go to Proverbs 3, 1 and 6. One through six, I'm sorry. Proverbs three, one through six. Uh huh. You, you want to read it? I have it up. Okay, yeah, I'll read it. I was just trying to put it in here. Hey, Johnville, if you're in a position, can you type that in for the people? Proverbs three, one through verses six. one through six. If y'all don't know, Johnville uh, has become our us. administrator. Mm -hmm. Uh, not because she asked to be, but she stepped up and started doing stuff we didn't even ask her to do. And so And she's showing herself she's faithful. showing herself faithful in doing it. So she just became our uh uh administrator. So I appreciate that. And this is what the father dropped in my spirit a minute ago. Mm -hmm. The biggest way to hinder not just your walk, but your witness on this side of truth is inconsistency. If you just hold fast to the truth, yes, you you might have temptations. They they may start to ask you, hey, come over here on this day and this day and let's do this and try to find the bridge between it. When you understand that the ultimate goal is to celebrate that pagan holiday, you just hold fast to it. No, I can't come over there because I know what you I know what it's for. I know what it's for. That consistency will be a witness to the very family. Who, who may be propositioning you. Thank you, John Ville, for putting that in there. There we go. And it reads this. Uh, no, it's uh, Proverbs chapter 3, John Ville. Uh-huh, chapter Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, 1 through 6. 6. If you hit, you can hit the edit button. Yeah, you can hit the edit button. Or you can delete it all together. Or delete it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Oh, uh, 1 through 6. It says this. My son, forget not my Torah, my law, instruction. But let your Laval heart guard my commandments for length of days and long life and shalom, peace, shall they add to you. Hallelujah. Let not mercy and emit truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your Laval heart. So shall you find favor. And good understanding in the sight of Elohim and, and man. Hallelujah. Number five. Trust in El Yahuwah with all your heart, Yelavav. And lean not unto your own understanding. That's where that come from. Mm -hmm. That's where the scripture come from. You start trying to do, do the feel good. Uh -huh. Verse number six. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Hallelujah. In all your all ways. All your ways. And here and this is what it's saying. It's saying, weigh your ways against Torah. And he will guide you through. Why? Because the answer is in his instructions. Yeah. So when you are lost, you want to know how to be found in his word. When you're confused, you want to know how to get get clarity in his word. When you're heartbroken, you want to you want to feel that fulfillment, that love, that comfort. It's in His Word. Everything comes back to His instructions, and this is what He's telling us. And the, and then all of us are doing things in this side of the world for the very same results that He has promised us if we follow His instructions. We want peace. We start trying to get in good with people. We do. We, we want length of days and long life. We buy every miracle drug and everything that the world has to offer us to pro, pro, to, to prolong, prolong life, life, right? You know, we, we want people to be truthful to us, but we want to live in the lie, right? And get you, mad. And get mad, right? Don't. We put the expectation in people. 
and not in the word. See, when you put the expectation in the word, it won't fail you. And I say this all the time. We have to inspect that expectation. People are designed ever since the fall of man to fall short of the glory. They are going to disappoint you. But when you put your faith, hope, and expectation in the Father, you're going to trust that regardless of that, it's somehow going to work to the good. Regardless of what you're going through, it's just not going to compare to the glory to be revealed. And that's the whole purpose of the race. We want we want to go from glory to glory until we get what? To the ultimate level of glory, which is the Father himself. And there's no way you can do that in your own understanding. So he's saying even when you have questions, that does not mean to forsake the truth. If you find it in his word, you have to be obedient, even if you don't understand it. You have to be obedient. Yeah. You have to just do it. And <clears throat> some of you are saying, but I, I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. You were created with the will to do. We, you were created with that. We have been our biggest stumbling block. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and let me show you how. Bless you, Mimo. Bless you. Let me show you how we've been a stumbling block. See, we're not perfect. Even Moshe, Moses. When Abba Yah called him to do something, he kept trying to give the father every excuse he could of why he couldn't do. Mm-hmm. I'm slow of speech. You know, I'm, I'm not this, I'm not that. And he, and he pretty much ticked God off. He, he said, okay, we're going to get your brother Aaron. He going to help out. See, when the father called you to do something, he's not looking for everybody else's approval. He don't need nobody else's approval because he's the one that created you. He just needs you to do. Quit giving him what you cannot do and why you cannot do because remember you keep telling them why you can't do and why you can't perform mm-hmm. you're showing up miss your best and blessing and bypass you and go to somebody else and you're still praying and asking father just use me see a lot of times we don't realize we don't mean what we really say we don't yeah. mean what we really pray we want the glorified version of yes yeah. <laughs> in order for you to be used and you're asking him for these things. You have to be tested. You have to be tried. He got to put you in a position to do. But you keep telling him why you can't do. Stop praying to him and asking for stuff. And when he tell you to do something, you give him every excuse of why you cannot do. Okay. And even when Moses got the light. Yeah. Even when he got the glory. It was so bright, people couldn't stand to look upon him. Now, mind you, it wasn't his glory. It wasn't his. He was in the presence of the Father. And there's no way you can't be in the presence of the Father and not come out with some of his attributes. But it just goes to say that when you want the glory of the Father mm-hmm. and you want to bypass the way of the Father, you're going to be, you're going to have a false sense of it. Mm-hmm. And then even should you do this thing the right way, you will have the understanding that is not going to bring you the people, the validation and the reverence. That's when you that's when you're haughty. No, it's actually going to separate you even more from the people. Yeah. It's going to isolate you. They going you know, well, just understand. People, people, some right now, even in the earthly sense, can't stand your shine. They get to looking at you. Oh, you thank you this. You thank you that. Oh, now that you done got this bonus. Now that you done got this job. Now that these people over here loving you, you done forgot where you come from. This, I that, surely this. did. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to go people back to where I came from. I surely did. Forget cannot what Cannot stand. <laughs> Yeah. The only time they can tolerate your shine is when they can draw from your shine. And most of the people that draw from your shine aren't people that want to change. These are people that are robbing your pearls. They they just want the, the, the benefit of it right then. They don't want the internal work and change. And that's when you have to have the wisdom of the Father, the discernment, and an understanding. Now, the word says, and all that get and get an understanding, but he didn't say your own understanding. Right. That understanding Lean is not. his. Lean not to your own. Yeah. He don't want you to try to figure it out. He wants you to understand he got it. <laughs> it's in him. Question. And, and I love how you said it. Mima, I want to ask you something. Because, now, let me know if I got the story right. Back when you was uh, uh, at a certain church, and the father was blessing you, doing good. People got jealous of you because you had the nice things. You had the jewelry. You had the nice cards and stuff. And that don't make sense to me when we're supposed to be at a place where when we're following and walking in the line that the Father have us to do, he has no problem with giving us the desires of our heart when we're walking up right with him. But the very people that we all come together 
people say things that they don't mean. They they oh I love you. I I, I hope the Father blessing you. Ooh, blessings unto you. But then when the Father really start giving you these things, if you don't give it to them, because <laughs> because you're choosing to walk upright, yeah. but because your shine is a lot brighter than theirs in that season in that moment, people but. Uh, begin to get jealous. People begin to let their heart turn. People begin to get think mad at you and think, yeah, think you're holy than now. Think mm-hmm. you better than them. And ain't nobody even put that out there like that. So, which lets me know. I'm okay this. with being holier than thou, holier than you. <laughs> this lets me know <laughs> if that's your heart. When the Father has taken you from one place to another place, yes, I'm going to forget where I come from because I don't want to go back. To that place because I worked so hard with the Father delivering me not to go back. Yes. So yeah, I don't want to go back. Yeah, I did forget where I become, uh, where I come from because it's not worth going backwards when the Father is showing me that going forward is bringing me closer and closer to Him. He Hallelujah. said, "I'm trying to take you from glory to glory to the next realm to the next realm." So you know what, y'all. When you're doing good, people going to talk about you. When you're doing bad, people going to talk about you. More of the story, folk going to talk about you regardless. Stop putting your stock on what folk have to say and put your people. stock, your noon, your seed into the word of Abaya as he builds you up. That's right. Point blank. What is we going to say? And just, you have to forget because you can't put... New hey, wine Shabbat shalom, and John. old wine skin. Shakui, I mean. It is necessary to let go of that dead weight, mm. the things you can't change, the mm. things that have already happened, so you can walk in the freedom. That's bondage, y'all. Holding on mm. to the past is bondage. Holding on to those hurts, holding on to the struggle, that's bondage. It was necessary to get you out of there. Otherwise, you've been too comfortable to move. Mm, it was necessary. So we just got to let it go, and we got to trust the Father and His process of it. I say that about people who form against us. If Hamashiach can say, forgive them for they know not what they do, why can't we live by that? You know why? Because it took that person to upset you, to get you to do something the Father whispered in your ear a decade ago. It took that person to form against you so that something that was lying dormant and you could rise forward. It's about purpose. But if we put so much focus on who did it, what did it, and why, then we're going to get lost in it. We're going to get consumed with bitterness, vengeance, and and, and just a whole hateful heart. Yeah. We have to understand that it was necessary. Therefore, it was allowed. It was Yah ordained. That person who was mean-spirited to you, it ain't to say that the mean spirit was quote unquote right but it was necessary Ooh, baby. it was necessary when that person mistreated you you have to come to understand that it was Yah ordained because his word told us y'all that a he would never give us more than we could bear that the battle is not ours it is his he encouraged us to trust him in all things and understand that his plans for us is to prop is to prosper us not to harm us but to give us a future and a hope how dare we throw out his truth to get stuck on a person who can't control time purpose or your destiny. Can't, you can't do it. I'm going to say something. That if you are truthful with yourself. And you're willing to see yourself. This just may set you free. And give you a greater understanding. And how to handle situations like this. We have all. Been somebody's Judas. Yeah. Let, let that sink in for a moment. Yeah. We have all been somebody's Judas. We're not perfect. Judas had a purpose and that purpose was to help send Hamashiach to the destined place, the cross, right? Somebody on the inside. We have all been somebody's Judas. You may not want to think about yourself as a Judas. We all have this complex. Well, I'm a good person. Yeah, I hear all that. Everybody will say they're a good person (laughs) to themselves because... Who can give credit to themselves for being good? Right. If you really understand what that word good mean, you'll stop using it in that context Mm -hmm. in the purpose in which Abiyah created the function of that word good. Yeah. So we have to do Um, what? Examine. We have to examine ourselves. We have all been somebody's thorn. We have all been somebody's appointed person to help boost them and catapult them into the next level of where the Father is taking them. So quit putting so much stock in how they hurt you because 
No, I don't have it all together. I had to learn this too. Yeah. And, and truth be told, it may be something that's going to happen in the future that these very words that I'm speaking now, I will have to reflect back on in order for me to let that thing go. We're up to every to every thing. There is a season, y'all. There is a season to everything. And until you're in that season, then try to gird yourself up with as much Torah, knowledge and wisdom in your heart. Yes. So that when it comes, because ain't no if, when it comes, mm -hmm. you will be better prepared to handle the trial. Now, it don't mean that you won't be like, God, Lee, what's happening? Yeah, that initial shock of going through is going to hit us. It's supposed to. It's going to hit yes. us. But you have to fall back on what you strengthen depending on what you feed the most that will be the strongest if you feed your flesh more then your ruah ain't gonna be that strong so you're gonna try to fight spirit with flesh and that ain't gonna win if you feed your spirit more than you feed your flesh you have a grounds to stand on you have a word to stand upon and fight even if you bend you're meant to bend but not break even if it seems like a struggle and it's hard and you just want to give up, you can't because you still keep the armor of Abaya on. And yes, you're going to take the blows, but it will not hit the vital organs that will cause death. Yes, it's going to sting. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to be discomfortable, uh, 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 not comfortable. Uncomfortable. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. But even in the midst of being uncomfortable, sometimes Father has to put you in an uncomfortable place to wake you up, to see how strong you are so that you can persevere and push through. And you are somebody's sacrifice so that they can make it out. So remember, it is not always about you. It has everything to do with what the Father is trying to get through you, in you, by you, for you, because you are created on purpose, by purpose, with purpose, for purpose, okay? Right. And all of this has to do with what we're teaching on today with the fact of the Ruah. When the Ruah is 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 showing you emet, when he's showing you truth, you got to implement it. Everything we're saying today, we're bringing it all together, even with the traditions of man. You can't bypass mm -hmm. truth. And when you know better, people love to say this, when you know better, you do mm -hmm. better. But oftentimes, we only know better in what we speak, but we don't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about what you say because you can say anything. Your action, you say this all the time, and I hope I ain't jacking it up when you say it. But you behave yeah, you behave your belief. Your actions speak louder than what your mouth can. You can say anything, but your actions will really tell what you believe. And but see, that's how the Father reveals unto you who mm -hmm. you are. When He says, "I've given you a will to do." Mm -hmm. Y'all, this is this will is a law. It's fixated. You don't have an option. You're either going to do the right thing or the wrong thing. But what you're not going to be able to do is say the right things and not be exposed if you're doing the wrong thing. Like he, the will to do is the actual result of the thought process and the belief that you have. It has to happen. We were we were talking about this uh, a little bit earlier this week or even last week when we were talking about reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping. Listen, sowing and reaping is not optional. It is absolutely not optional. It yeah. is a command. It is a law. This is happening when you don't think it's happening. This is happening when you're not putting any effort or cogn cognizant thought into it. Mm -hmm. You are sowing and you're reaping. We have just allowed, and, and I say we, but y'all know religion and church has allowed sowing and reaping to come down to money. Absolutely. And just money only. And we start thinking about the 30, 60, 100 fold, Ooh. and all we can think about is dollar return. No. If I get started I'm going on that, to I can tell teach you right that now you that your the seed has always been your action. It has been your decisions. Your decisions has always been the seed that you planted because your decisions are the manifested efforts and actions and the work of your thoughts. Now, once those seeds have been planted, those decisions have been done, the harvest is the result of that decision, those decisions, the season of decisions. So when you're going through this season where it just seemed like your hardship has hit you, you've got to examine your decisions in time past. Because one thing we know for sure is that you can't keep doing what you have been doing, right? Because that's what's producing the fruit that you don't like. 
The father tells us that that which you sow, you shall surely reap. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. He's speaking to a stingy heart. He wants us to be generous. Generous not just in money. Generous in love. Generous in patience. Generous in long-suffering. Generous in our praise. Generous in our gratitude. Then you can reap the bountifully, the bountiful benefit of that. But if you have been a bitter person in your soul, in your spirit, you have done nothing but complain. Your actions are lazy and procrastinated and and everything that you do causes a conflict with the next person, then you got to understand that it is the law of God that is going to bring that harvest back to you. And you're not going to like it. You're not going to like the way that it tastes. You're not going to like the way that it feels. It's going to feel like you're lacking. It's going to feel underserving to you. And you're going to be stuck in the why. And the why is because you have not inspected your expectation and you kept putting the accountability on the things that you could not control versus the things you could. Because because every storm that you're put in, every trial, every suffering thing has been designed to not only show you you, but to build you up through those errors. The worst thing we can do as a follower of the Most High is to not get the lesson out of that suffering thing. It's to keep doing what we've been doing because what happens is you suffer in vain. You didn't learn what was necessary so that you didn't have to suffer that way anymore. And we're coming back to instruction in Torah because that is where your true change comes. He tells us that Romans 12 uh, and 2, 12, 1 and 2. He says, do not conform to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing and the cleansing of your mind comes through his instructions. So we want to change. Listen, you can make a million mistakes, but just don't make the same one. Because what's going to happen is eventually you're going to get the right one. You know, you're going to stay there. You're going to keep taking that same test until you pass it. Yeah. So, you know, and a lot of as us have. As long as you ain't making the same one, yeah. you on the road of progress. And as long as you are looking into his instruction for the right way, you can save yourself time. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I failed a couple, a lot of tests over and over and over, over and over and over. Because it was harder for us Taking to see. Taking that same test over yeah. and over until I finally something clicked. Like, you know what? Enough is enough. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's when change happens. Yeah. Let's let's take this into the, the Christmas. What, you, what you're doing. Because we had to set the scene. And that was a, a wonderful way of setting the scene that Hallelujah. Father has to speak on. Opening up to the truth. You want me to go ahead and show this right here? Yeah, you, you can. I, I want to show you all something about truth and lies. I think I'm, I'm going to take this one at a time. Johnville, if you could do me a favor, <clears throat> place in the uh, uh, place in the in the uh, um, comment okay. section, yeah. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 through 8. Yermiyahu chapter 10 verse 1 through 8. <clears throat> I'm going to show something here. I know there's a delay on our end, so by the time Johnville get this, uh, the picture will be done, showed up, but J Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 8. I want to show y'all something. Uh, this is going to take a turn. No, it's not taking a turn. We're still diving in the truth, and this is going to cause you to see y'all. I just pray that you stick this out with us. I have a scripture that we were earlier. We was talking about the traditions of man. I want to talk to you about this tradition, this pagan tradition, the root of Christmas. The reason why I had Johnville put up that scripture. Let's see if she's there. If she's not there, uh, Shamoris, will you put it up if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. I know it's. Oh, she already did. She already okay. did right there. Thanks, Johnville. I'd be forgetting it's a delay, and then on my end, it didn't even show up yet, so it's going to come up later. But thank you, Johnville. <clears throat> the pagan roots of Christmas, y'all. For the let's let's just go to Jer, uh, Jeremiah. Shmosh, you already have that scripture. Up. Uh, Jeremiah chapter ten. No, but I'll pull it up real quick. Okay, Yahoo chapter ten. Because I, I want to read this into y'all hearing just in case. And it ain't going to be no just case. People will challenge you. I got it right here. Okay, I got it too. People are going to challenge you, y'all. Says this. One through eight. Hear the word which Yahuwah speaks unto you, O house of Israel. In other words, that would have said Shema Israel. Hear. Mm -hmm, hear. 
O house of Israel, talking to us. Thus says Yahuwah, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as palm trees but speak not. They must need be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Y'all, for as much as there is none like unto you, O Yahuwah, you are great, and your name is great in the might. Y'all, um, Christmas went by many names. Hopefully you can see here on... But you didn't finish, baby. If you got to do seven and eight. Well. I did do seven and eight. No, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, six. For as much as there is none like unto you, O Yahuwah, you are great and your name is great in might. Verse seven. Who would not fear you, O King Melech of nations? For to you does it... Uh, huh? the, to you does it appertain for as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto you, but they are altogether brutish Ooh. and foolish. Ooh. The tree is a doctrine of vanity. All right. Y'all, Christmas is going by different names of winter festival. Saturnalia, winter solstice, Mirtha, Nimrod, Tammuz. For those who have heard this word Nimrod, yeah, that was the same Nimrod who built the Tower of Babel, who said they were going to build it to go up to fight against Yahuwah. And all of this birth from his mama, him, his mama, and his dad, Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Nimrod married his mama and gave birth. And told everybody. Told everybody that this is her husband reincarnated through the sun. And he was born on December 25th. The birth of the sun god. He's been known as the sun god, y'all. Thank you. Been been known as the sun god. We don't know. See, a lot of people didn't know all of this went in it. And then again, you hear them say, but it don't mean that to me. I know that his, day, his birth ain't on the 25th. But for me, it's about family. What you don't realize is your celebration is still in line with celebrating the paganist action or paganist remembrance of it. Which goes back to Maccabees. Absolutely. It's like a twisting of it to get you to compromise the law and the integrity of the father to do what? So if you choose to behave outside of the instructions of the father, then you're essentially saying that that is who you choose to serve. I want to share this other little uh, note that you, you came up with, babe. I want to share this other nugget right here. Truth or lie. I, I want y'all to see this. Truth or lie. We're going to figure out what does the scripture say. Birth of our Hamashia, which means Messiah, on December 25th. That's a lie. The three kings of Orient. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. We are to redeem pagan practices. That's a lie. Santa Claus. That's a lie. Do your origin on where they came from. Saint Nick, Krimpus, Satan Claus, mm -hmm. Black Pete. And what the, the December 25th means. Y'all do understand that December 25th in the, in the pagan season is the birth of so many different uh, names for the same God. That's why we're in the season of the witch. Y'all had no idea what that was. Then, 
flying reindeer. Come on, y'all. We know that ain't. But as kids, hey, we all came up under that but because we, we were we not in the truth. The lie. Yeah. That's the issue. We perpetuate the falsehood and we allow our children and our loved ones to grab hope off of the lie. <laughs> Elf power <laughs> at the factory. Yeah. We, we, we sit there and make them think that on, in the North Pole is this jolly, fat, white, red cheek Saint Nick. We've even turned him black now. Yeah, we've turned <laughs> we black too. Into... <laughs> at, that knows both good and evil. That Ooh, is one coming. person that can know everything in the entire world and he is able to judge that which is good or evil by having the you sit in his lap and you sit in his lap and he can tell you whether you are good or evil and according to that he's going to make a one round in the entire world and drop gifts to everybody in the world like think about that and then we let our children sit in the laps of these men that could probably have perversions and criminal <laughs> backgrounds like we're not considering that we're putting our children in the laps of people we don't even know who have disguised themselves to look like somebody that we know ain't real it just I, listen I understand I could talk on it I did it too yeah. I could talk on it but man, when you sit back and you think about that and the word that tells us not to practice those lies, not to perpetuate those lies, then you realize as cute as it seems, it ain't cute at all. You know, I want to back this up with the scripture. Mm -hmm. So people don't think, again, this is our own belief, but we're, we're coming from the word. I'd rather give you the word than my belief. Uh, um, Shizayon. Shizayon or... Uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 and 15 says this blessed are they that do Yahuwah's commandments that they may be right to the tree of life not the Christmas tree but the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city verse 15 for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. Y'all, fact of the matter is there are going to be people that rather believe a lie than the truth. The word says that in the day People will rather believe a lie than a truth. My concern, but if you read your word, Abayah's concern has always been about waking up Israel and making sure Israel did not fall victim to the customs of the heathen nation. Now, of course, we were all scattered and we were scattered into the land of our captors. We're still here. And because we were up under the curse, we took up on these traditions. And mm -hmm. according to the, uh, the book of Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon, mm -hmm. he told us that we would forget. And I, I have scriptures for that. Yeah. You know, it's um, uh, chapter 16 and 23. But this again did even well, well, uh, the book of Solomon, wisdom of Solomon. Okay. We're in the apocrypha yeah, on this one. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to uh, 17 and 3. Oh, For man. while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 4. For the destiny whereof they were worthy drew them unto this end and made them forget the things that had already happened, that they might fulfill the punishment which was wanting to their torments. The Father has orchestrated us to for a season for many for many of us. I'm gonna put this in here because uh, John, you probably didn't have this one, but so it's I'm gonna put it in here. The it's the book of, of wisdom. Yes. So all I'm saying is we can't get stuck on why we didn't know it when we didn't know it. What we have to focus on is when the truth comes our way, because the Father even talks about in Isaiah that He would not only cause us to forget, but He would also cause us to remember. What scripture did you read? 
Um, I read 17 and 3, 19 okay. and 4. 17 and 3. But even though maybe our past didn't reflect that knowledge of truth, the point of the matter is it's revealed into us now. And we, and there is not a single person on this side right now that will have the ability to say to the father, I didn't know. No one ever told me. The opportunity was never presented. Because the father has absolutely promised us that we will all have the opportunity for his truth. Yeah. That we would be without excuse. And so we are just really pleading. Pleading with you all to not focus your energies on who's delivering the message. Grab these scriptures. Study to show thyself approved. Man, repent and turn away. That is the responsibility of those of us who are still striving. We're still here. Walking toward the prize. We're still in the race. You're not supposed to know everything right away. But according to purpose and the timing that the Father has ordained, the opportunities will reveal itself. Don't get caught up in the gifts. You are the same one who bought those gifts, sacrificed for the gifts, and made it important. You lean into the programming of the TV. There is not a radio ad, a, a, a TV commercial, a broadcast that you can watch now that does not remind you of the Christmas season and the need to go buy a gift. They give you every imaginable impression of joy to make it seem worth it. And many families suffer unto death to go make these things happen for children that don't even know the Ten Commandments, that don't know the Father, that don't understand the need. And the Word tells us that if we spare the rod, we spoil the child. And I want y'all to hear that. We think that was the belt. No, the rod has always been the word. If we don't give our kids the word, we ruin that child. For thy rod and thy staff comfort me. We, we have to just come back and break out of the tradition of men. We have to understand that regardless of how long you've heard that we've been living in the last days, we're closer to them now than we were then. Yeah. Bless you. We're still closer to it. And I don't want to look up and not be ready. I, I, I just, I don't want to bypass his truth for the approval of men. This truth is going to be far less popular than anything you have ever experienced in this world or come to know in this world. So you can't lean on everybody getting it to walk in it. Yes, you, you may be the chosen remnant to represent your family. The chosen remnant to bear the suffering and the sacrifice that your family may have the opportunity. Your family, your friends, those connected to you. Y'all, that's Joseph. That's Moses, that's Abraham. All of these pioneers had to bear a sacrifice for the greater good. And sometimes they weren't around to see the worldly promise fulfilled, but they got the eternal, the eternal promise. I know that this is a time where people will say, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to know. I done already bought these Christmas gifts. I already got the tree up. How do I face my family? How do I face my family? Listen, let the spirit of truth guide you. Do not ignore the conviction in your spirit, for he brings chastisement to those he loves. Let that be a reminder and some encouragement to you. Y'all, it's so much to the truth. It's people who say, well, I know his name ain't Jesus, but yet you call him that all the time. Man. And, and oh I just want gosh. you to understand why is Thank that important? You. Because the word talks about the name above all names. If the Bible was rewritten, to take it out more than 7,000 times. You got to understand what, what was, there had to have been an agenda behind it. Because what word didn't change in the Bible? Hasatan. It didn't change. You know. And we give so much stock over to the enemy. And I want y'all to hear me. The Bible says, he never told us to fight Satan. He said, if you resist temptation, then the enemy must flee. 
he basically tells us that temptation is going to be the gateway for us to do what? Bypass the truth of his word and do what feels good and brings temporary gratification. And if we would just resist, then that enemy, that demonic spirit, that wickedness has to flee. Many of us have made the devil to be like an equal adversary of the Most High Yahuwah. Not true. He is judged. He has already been cast out. His time is limited. He's not all-knowing. He's not omnipresent. He's not all-powerful. He still has to get the permission from the Most High to do any of his bidding. And if the Father ordains it, he has designed it to somehow work out for our good and his glory. We have to understand our role in this. And we have to understand that while we may not be exempt for suffering, see, that sometimes makes people think that they're good with the Father. Mm -hmm. They're not suffering. I must be good with the Father. Don't you dare take on that high-mindedness. If you suffer with me, you will reign with me. And blessed are those who suffer for my namesake. And don't forget that suffering shall be amongst you always. It's there. It's and the, there's a scripture in the Bible, I have to find it, that tells us that when we are in, in what seems prosperity, that we forget the, uh, the suffering. We forget the Father in the suffering. But when we're in the midst of the suffering, we forget the prosperity. It, it, it is a distraction in a sense. And what we have to do is be anchored in his word, in the truth of his word, that regardless of the circumstance we're in in life, that we never forget him. That is the whole prize. That's the whole walk is to find yourself in the discipline of the word that no matter what happens, no matter who happens, you don't change your mind about the father in the worst way. You don't cast him away when things are really good and then cry upon him when things are bad. You can't waver in that sense. You have to have a made up mind that whether things are good or things are bad. You can still have the echo of Job in your spirit. Yea, though he slay me, yet still will I trust him. It didn't matter that I was sitting on the mountaintop and that everybody knew my name or I was down in the valley low and nobody knew me. It doesn't matter that I have this amount of following or this amount of money. I am forever dedicated and committed to the Father because he is. And I believe him so much so. And that's going to give you the courage and the ability to face those who may have even an emotional tie to you. You can look at mama, you can look at daddy and say, I love you. I do as much as I know how to love in this form, but I do love the father more. And I would just pray that you would consider him even above me, even above yourself, that you should understand that this is the only reason, he is the reason that I move the way that I move, that I respond the way that I respond, and that I cannot uphold these traditions of man because it is in direct disappointment, conflict, and disobedience of the Father. And I just choose him above all things. I love you. I don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. And I just implore with everything in me that you would just seek it out for yourself. Don't do it because Shemorse is doing it. Don't do this because Jay is doing this. We just want you to go to the word that you uphold, so you say. To the father whom you believe, so you say. Get this truth and walk in it. Because everything that you give up for this truth won't even compare. It just won't even be able to measure up to the father, his goodness, his presence, his shamayin, his heaven. His treasures, it won't compare. I love y'all. I don't, I, I just, Jay and I just don't know how to express. We don't know how to reach you all outside of the word. I want to, I want to share this scripture with you that you just said and I found. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter, uh. If I'm not mistaken, it's chapter 10. No, no, it can't be chapter 10. No, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Yeah. And I'm going to read verses 8 through uh, eight through 15. Okay. You want me to put it in there? Did y'all go do it already? Uh, it'll be Johnville, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8 
through 15. You're going to notice some scriptures in there that we that we say a lot, but you will hopefully understand it in yeah. its entirety. It says this. Remember that at Yahusha Hamashiach of the seed of Dawid, David, was raised from the dead according to my besorah. That's how you say good God, news in, in gospel. In gospel in Hebrew. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds. If y'all understand that bonds, it lines up with Deuteronomy chapter 20, uh, 28, where we will be bondsmen. Where we will come over to the land of Mitzrayim, house of bondage, in bonds, stocks and bonds. Even unto bonds. I'm going to read that over. Wherein I suffer trouble. As an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahuwah is not bonded, bound. or is not bound. The word of Yah is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes. Y'all, we're elect. Mm -hmm. We endure all things for not only you, but for those that are called by Yahuwah for their sakes. That they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Mashiach, Yahusha, mm -hmm. the Messiah, the anointed, Messiah. the anointed one, with eternal kavod, glory. Eleven. It is the faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Meaning we die to our old self. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. We just touched on that. Mm -hmm. If we deny him, he also will deny us. You said that earlier. 13. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Charging them before Yahuwah that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. <clears throat> 15. People love to say this. This is where this comes from. Study to show yourself approved unto Yah. Unto who? Unto Yah. Unto who? Unto Yahuwah. <laughs> That's right. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of emet, truth. This is what we strive to do, and I'm not done yet. We rightly work to divide this word. This is one of our Hebrew words, Zadi, to rightfully divide, to cut. To cut. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So as we begin to give divide. you the word and divide it, we get cut by it just like you get cut by it. It's a bloody thing. It's not just us teaching and preaching at you. We have to go through it too. So we get cut. Y'all get cut. It don't feel good. But what it's doing is it's cutting off the things that has kept us bound. It's cutting off the things that has no purpose so that we can really be made whole and, and move forward in Torah. 16. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more wickedness. Why did I end right there? You're going to have people babbling because you choose to want to do what's right. And it's in vain. Well, what do you mean by that? Here's the main one. Well, I know these holidays ain't about that. It ain't about that for me. It's about the family. It's about doing it. That's a vain babbling. If you know the truth, why do you still choose to operate in the lie? His name. Shemur brought 19. this up. Read 19. Okay, I'll read 19. You got to, yes. i read 19. Uh, i read 18, then 19. Who concerning the truth, amen, have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the beliefs of some. 19. 
Nevertheless, the foundation of Yah stands sure. Having this seal, Yahuwah knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Yahuwah depart from iniquity. All right, so y'all listen. Going back to his name. You can tell people his name, not Jesus. And they say, well, I knew that. I know his name is Yahushua. If you know his name is not that, why do you continue to call him out of his name? That's just like me saying, I know this person's name is Brandon, but I'm going to continue to call him Derek. Derek ain't even a nickname. It's a whole new name. His, it's a whole new name. His name is Brandon. His name is Yahushua. It's not the translation. It's not yes. the transliteration. He says, I come in my father's name. And let me do you one too, better, so that you can research and you don't think I'm making this up. Not sure. The letter J. The letter J is only 450 to 500 years old. Hamashiach, this was written well over 2,000 years. If you were to go to somebody back then and say, I want to know about Jesus, they're going to look at you like, who are you talking about? Ain't nobody here named no Jesus. In fact, his name, Yahushua. That was the same name that they translate to Joshua. Yep. Same name. Son of he who saves. Yep. If his name is Yahushua, how do we get Jesus and then Joshua and never call him that? That is a lie from the enemy, the trickery of coming in and mistranslating, mistransfigurating our word, okay? Mm -hmm. We just read about in all that getting, getting understanding. You see, the name matters. Yes, he was doing some things in our ignorance. Yes, he showed up because he knew we were still under the curse. He didn't know. Now, for everyone that has heard this on today, you are now held accountable for the truth that you know. I'm still going to ask you to go back and research for yourself. Mm -hmm. Even though I may mean, I told you, go back and study for yourself because there are some things that the Father want to show you yeah. about him. It's power in the name. That's why that scripture says, many will say, well, I prophesied in your name and I did this in your name. And he'll say, Depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I never knew you. That ain't his name. Mm -hmm. His name is Yahushua. Now, does that mean that everything you have experienced in the Father was a lie? No, that don't. Because he knew that you were still in the unknowing. Well, I'll, I'll say he, this too. Mm -hmm. We have to consider that you might come across somebody that you liked that you just had a great exchange conversation, even what you would consider some level of friendship with. And you came to know them um, as, let's just say John, right? Um, but John wasn't his name. But because you was on a surface level of things, he, he knew he was talking to him and it just, it was okay, no big deal at the moment. <laughs> but as you built a friendship with John, John may look over to you and say, hey, I know you called me John and I didn't mind it before, but my name is actually not John. You know, it's Thomas. And you'd be sitting there, why do you let me call you John the whole time if your name was Thomas? Well, you know, because I, I knew you was talking to me and, and I, I valued our time and I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. And I knew that as we come to know each other, I could tell you the truth. I could tell you my name. I, I could, I could, it, and you'd be like, oh, let me, let me fix that. I won't call you that anymore. Now, take this. If somebody gives you a name, that's not your name, and you've corrected them, and they bypass correction and continue to call you the name, the same name. Don't you get vexed in your spirit? My name is not Shay. It's Shamoris. It is not Shay. It's not my nickname. It's the name you decided you wanted to give me because you were what too lazy to learn my name. I'm offended by that. So the Father has allowed us to experience Him and grow a, a, a intimate relationship with Him, and then He revealed to us something that we needed to know. It did not discredit his love for us, his value for us then. It was just a timing thing. Now, with that being said, we're not even talking about preference over truth. This comes back to the power of the name and the name being the seal. So if his name is the seal that sets you apart on your forehead, your right hand, do you really want to risk changing or using a name that you have found in your own studies to be untrue that didn't even exist 
when he walked the earth. Nobody called him Jesus when he was around. Nobody called him that. Can I say something really mm -hmm. quickly? For those of y'all, this may be your first time hearing this. What's happening right now, you feel something on the inside. This is called a paradigm shift. Yeah. It's where you taking the old way of thinking, introducing it to a new way. This is new for you. It's not new, period, because there's nothing new under the sun. This has always been his name, Yehoshua. But it's new to you. So now there's a paradigm shift taking place because you never knew this. And yes, it's going to be a little struggle for a little bit because you want to call him by the right name. So you may slip up and say the name Jesus until mm -hmm. you fully get it right by calling him Yeshua or Yehoshua. There's a paradigm shift that's taken into your life, y'all. The name matters. He matters. You matter to him. Truth, emet, is the premise of our whole life. Mm -hmm. and I won't. If you notice, when you operate in the truth of things, it's much easier as the path goes. Not saying that it's going to be super easy and things fly by, no. The way you operate when it comes to Abaya. You said something about the name. Knowing his real name, it becomes it's a difference between an acquaintance and intimacy. Intimacy, you begin to know the ins and outs. You want to know the ins and outs of a person. You want to know what makes them tick. You want to know what they love. You want to know what drives them. And they want to know the same for you. So you begin to share details that not everybody is privy to. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that inviting to come in when it comes to intimacy. Some people only have so far that you can go and that you give them. Because they have not earned that part of intimacy yet. Everybody's not your friend. The word says a friend sticketh closer than a brother. And Hamashiach said, I call you friend. I just want you to reflect a little while. Does he call you friend? Or are you still an acquaintance hoping to be a friend? Or deceived. You know. That, that I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that. And remember, when you know better, you do better. The challenge is going to be to you is whether you want to learn his name, learn Torah, his ways. And do better, or do you want to stay the same way because it's just easier to operate in tradition and it's all you ever know? I can't answer that for you. But my job as a more, our job as a more, more means teacher in Hebrew, is to help wake up Jacob, help wake up Israel. Our brothers and sisters that are scattered around the world, whether they're Yehudi or whether they're Gentile, and they want to wake up and follow his laws and customs, my job is to teach his word. He does the transformation. And there'll be some that listen, go through their ear and out the other. Not one time in his word that I read that Hamashiach chased after anybody, begging them to follow him. Oh, I know that's going to set some folk on fire because they feel like they got to run after people and chase after people to convert them. Nope, that ain't what the word says. When they don't listen, you dust your sandals off and move to the next town. See, this is the difference between learning Torah and learning religion and tradition of man. Don't worry about what they say for I will place the words in your mouth. Don't worry about their faces. He said that to Yirmiyahu, who said that to Jeremiah. No different. I'm no different. We're no different. Yes, it will hurt our hearts because we want you so bad to get it. But I can't allow that to keep us stuck in a place where we can't move forward and go teach his word in hopes that those that have an ear to hear what Yahuwah is saying and eyes to see in the Ruah 
if it ain't but one, we're doing our job. If there's many, hallelujah. hallelujah. But y'all have to realize this work just ain't up to me and Shamor's. Mm -mm. It's up to you because there is a people that will listen to you over us. Yes, they may come visit TGCB or yeah. jump on because of you. They're jumping on because of you, not us. They trust Yahuwah in you. You have to know where you are and trust that the, 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 the mustard seed of Imuna faith that you have mm -hmm. is enough to give your testimony, to give life to somebody else. That's Again, right. today's message had to do with, you know, uh, uh, um, when, when the Ruah gives us, emet, gives us truth, we have to implement it. As he gives it to us. As he gives it to us. We don't expect and we and it hasn't even been our experience to get every ounce of truth. Shabbat there shalom, is Demetrius. Sorry, I'm just all at once. This, Aki. No, but as the Ruach the Ruach Hakadesh reveals truth unto you, implement it. Yeah. That's it. And it's going to be a journey of revelation. Yeah. It's to say that for someone who may have read the whole Bible once got it all. That is not the truth. It is a life breathing book. It is going to continue. Yes, it is going to continue to reveal. It's going to continue to clean us up. It's going to continue to uh, advance us in the walk. We can't cast the book aside because we got from the beginning to the end of the book. No longer, no more than we can go a day without reflecting on his word. The word tells us to, uh, to reflect, to meditate on his word day and night. You know why? So there will, it will be the ruling factor in our lives. We reflect on so many other things. We meditate on TV shows. We meditate on music. We meditate on all these things. And then we struggle with some of the application of life because we put more poison in than truth. We put more deception in than truth. We put more ideas in than truth. We put the idea that this is supposed to look this way and work this way based on what? What somebody else said to a nice hip beat that made you tap your, your feet and snap your fingers and bob your head. But we didn't pay attention because the beat was more attractive than the lyrics. And the lyrics was what was deposited into, deposited into our spirit. And then we began to behave the very thing that we, that we didn't agree with at first because the beat lured us in. We are depositing it in. The Father says to guard Torah. We have to protect it. We have to take it in and we have to protect it. And sometimes with our lives and, and really not even sometimes it's going to cost you to have Torah. <coughs> yes. It is. And for you, don't be afraid of that. Cause understand that the father said, those who abide in me, I shall abide in them. I am strongest when you are made weak. It's a prime opportunity for him to move mountains, to show up on our behalf. But we cannot measure Torah against our ideas of the word. We have to check our moralities against the Torah, the instruction. The Ten Commandments is the basis of that. The 630 plus laws is just an application to, to sustain the Ten. It gives us the things. It tells us how to keep our, our temples clean by clean eating. It tells us how to, how to walk in his ways and how to overcome struggle and how to overcome the, the obstacles that we will face, the conflict of family and friends, that when people come and steal from you, when, when you start to have sickness in your body, right, that, that goes out be, beyond what you can fathom or control. He gives us instructions in his tent. He helps us keep a, a mind to overcome temptation because it's rooted in him, in his understanding. And that's the way of a follower. If you don't want to obey his commandments, it would be... All I'm saying is, and I because I, I really want to choose my words carefully, your obedience to his word, not your understanding, is key. It is better for you to do it without understanding than to bypass it because you want that the ununderstanding. You get what I'm saying? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Do not cast his instructions aside. And he tells us that his burden is light. His yoke is light. The ten and his commands aren't designed to cause us hardship. They're actually designed to free us from it. 
And we just have to find value in him so much so that we allow it to do the work. And guess what, y'all? The work in changing your perspective is a, is a work in changing your way. It will be tough sometimes. It will be tough sometimes. Tougher than you can imagine to stay consistent. But when you find love in the Father to be more valuable, his presence to be more valuable, his, 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 his way to be more valuable than anything on this side, then you will find yourself saying it is a privilege and an honor to not only hear to not only have his seal, to not only walk in his ways, but to be called out from darkness and into his marvelous light. And that's all we strive to do as we are journeying, journeying the same way you are. We're going through errors to find the lessons. We are repenting and turning away from. We are exposing our, our mishaps that it may bring encouragement for you. We're not telling you to walk this thing in perfection as the world proclaims perfection. Y'all, we were perfect. There would be no need. But this journey is to bring us to perfection that we can come in and dwell amongst him without sorrow, without worry, without pain, without grief, without all the things that this world has put on us. And so I just hope that you all are encouraged that you are encouraged so much or bothered enough to go get the truth for yourself. I don't mind you being bothered. I don't mind you being upset. Just let that energy drive you to his word to uncover truth for yourself. That's it. If it stirred you up this morning, if it bothered you in your soul, if you're looking at your Christmas tree and you can't, you just can't rejoice like you need to, good. Why? Because the father is doing a work in the inside of you that's going to be far better than that tree could ever be. Far better. Far more liberated. If you knew what that tree really represented. Yeah. you will never look at it. And it's the out same. there. And you know yeah. the crazy thing is everything that we talked on, y'all, the world knows. The word literally tells us that we would be the last to know that the Gentiles would receive his truth before we would. Yeah. The word tells us that. And not only that, y'all, you can Google these things that we say. You can you can Google what is the name of the most high God. And guess what it's gonna say? Y W or Y V or Y V H U H V. It's gonna tell you that. Initials, I mean the vowels out when it's yeah, Wikipedia will tell you that. Yeah. You, you, I'm just saying it's hidden in behold plain sight. Behold the hand, behold, behold the, the nail. nail. That's what that means. Yud hey, Yud hey, Vav hey. These are your Hebrew alphabet letters. Which, His which, name which, means. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go behold ahead. the hand, behold the nail. That's and, telling you the story. Yeah, I think it went. Yeah, it did. On here. See? Oh, I thought it went through. Yeah. This way. <laughs> That's what I did, man. No, okay. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> we watch it back. Now look back there. Look. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Behold the nail. Behold. Hebrew is written from right to left. If we turn around, behold, that's gonna be left. Behold. Right. <laughs> Dog old girl. Yeah, we 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 real tripping over here on, on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this mirror got us thrown off. But that's okay. Y'all go you were able to find this. Yeah. It it really is before. It's not a hard search. Now I will caution you that you're gonna have to come back to scripture because there are people who have altered doctrines in every form imaginable. Yeah. This is not a hate group. The Father did not bring us into knowledge of the truth to hate anybody. Yes. He wants us to hate sin, but he wants us to love our enemies. Yes. And you have to understand the difference between the two. You've come into the knowledge of this truth. You have to own it to come and show that to others to set them free. You shouldn't be trying to condemn anybody. Right? Because there's no condemnation of those who are in Hamashiach. And who are we to see the heart of man? We all started somewhere. Man. I think it's very befitting to end with this prayer right here. And we really pray that you got it on today. Baruch et Adonai. Hamevrach Aloyam Ved Ashanatan Lanu et Petak Hamalakuth Shamayim Bi Mashiach. What I said was, Blessed are you, Adonai, forever and ever. For giving us the doorway to the kingdom of heaven in Messiah. Hallelujah. Y'all, if something was uh, said on today that um, blessed you or Baruch 
That's how you say bless in Hebrew. Baruch you. We ask that you consider giving to the gate called Beautiful. If you would like to sow, you know, sow. I don't have a number for you. If you like to sow your tithe, of course, you know that's 10% of your uh, gross. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like this is good ground and Abba Yah's leading you to sow, by all means do so. Mm -hmm. um, a love offering. Yeah, there's a love gift. offering, whether it's a uh, just an offering, period. <clears throat> you want to sow into this word, feeding your spirit. We say, Todaya, Toda Rabbi. Which means thank you, Father. Many thanks. And many thanks to you all. Um, whether it's Cash App, whether it's uh, on Givelify, and the instructions are there, right there, how to do it on Givelify. So we definitely thank you all. We're still in celebrating Hanukkah. It does yes. not end until Monday night. <clears throat> yes. So tonight again, for those of you uh, that's going to jump on, we're going to be lighting the candle again for our, what, sixth night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's so interesting because according to the ways of the Father, your day really started in in the nighttime. In the so evening. it was in the evening. Yeah, it started in the so, evening. So um, while we may count the days, it's a little weird because the official next day starts at the evening. Mm -hmm. So um, just keep that in mind as we are counting the candles. Yeah, we are we are throw. I know I'm gonna got thrown off. I'm like, wait a minute, but yeah, it starts uh -huh. with even, and it's biblically bad. Sundown up. to sundown. Yeah, when he created the heaven and the earth, it was even, and then it was night, and then it was morning, and then it was mm -hmm. day. So uh, somebody may not even know that. That's gonna cause you to go back and read Genesis. Yeah, your new day does it. not start at midnight. It surely <laughs> don't. The world changed this around and made all. Uh, uh, Made all these different laws. And we and, not try to get you confused. Foolery. It's also yeah. in your word that they would they would change the times, the days, and the calendars. Hey, I bet y'all didn't even know that when Abaya created the heaven and the earth, it was never 365 days. It was 364. What? Mm -hmm. Where you learn that? The book of Enoch. Yep, if yep, you yep. read the Apocrypha, the book of Enoch, it tells you about the days, even the moons, the stars, gives you the names of the angels. Y'all... Yep. Multiple it's so much that was taken out. One edit. Yeah, it is. It was so much <laughs> stuff taken out of our word that should have been there. Uh, but if you get a chance to read the Apocrypha, read the Book of Enoch, it will bless you, man. It, it is so off the chain mm -hmm. and how it lines up with the word. So, y'all, with that being said, we ahava you. We ahava. We're gonna leave out on this. Uh, uh, leave out on this. This message here. And as today, as the Holy Spirit shows you, it met, implemented, true. Yes. Johnville, Shabbat Six. Shalom. Mama, yes. Shabbat Shalom. Demetrius, Crap Shabbat music. Shalom. Oh, I'm finna play it right here because oh, okay. we don't go out on it, remember? Uh, uh, who else was on here today? Uh, uh, Shaquish, Shabbat Shalom. I don't know who else jumped on. It didn't um, let me see. Yeah, it didn't let me it see. It didn't let me see who jumped on, but to all Jerod of y'all that jumped the, on. Those who will come later. Yes. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat those Shalom. Those of you who never fellowship with us before. Man, listen, we, we welcome you on. We thank you for showing up today. We don't count it strange. We know that it was just the Father who drew you in today. Yeah. And we don't want you to count it as strange or coincidence. Anything that you heard on here, man, go and research for yourself. Check it out for yourself. And any questions you have. Now, we're not arguing the word with anybody. So, you know, if that's yeah. that's your intent, we're going to ask you to argue with yourself. Uh, but yeah. shoot, us, <laughs> shoot us your questions um, so that we can work with you and, and uh, get you an answer the best that we can. Okay. Amen to all my Kati and Aki. We don't no longer fool in paganism to the best mm -hmm. of our abilities. We trying. So I love you all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Until next time. Yeah. What? Paganism. What? Uh, we stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. Yeah. Uh, listen, paganism, paganism, paganism. We stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. The Romans took Saturnalia and named it Christmas. That's their tradition. Did Christ keep it? That ain't in scripture. How about I paint a picture? All roads lead to Babel. Babylon, them idols can't even save you. December 25th, birthday to Nimrod. Son named Tammuz, wife slash mother. Her name was Ishtar. Need I say more to convince y'all? Jeremiah 10 and 1. 
same tradition way before Christ, where they get it from. Learn not the way of the heathen, the workmen with the axe, decking trees with silver and gold. Say you do it for the kids, they still in your soul. Sitting children in Satan's lap, hungers from trees like ornaments, did you think of that? Let me take you back. A slave master asked his wife what she wants for Christmas. He said, let's take the biggest tree and have a public lynching. Tell me how we got in this position. Keeping these pagan days, you really a Christian? How about the feast days, Leviticus mentions? Uh, the end's approaching, they fooled you, you didn't notice. High time, wake out of that slumber, we getting close. Yeah, the end is near. I'd rather die before I live in fear. Shalom. Paganism, paganism. Uh, what? We stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. Paganism, paganism, paganism. What? We stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. Uh, yeah. What? Screaming Black Lives Matter at the table of a pagan feast that celebrates genocide to say the least. Father, thank you for these abominations we came to eat. Bow our heads and thank friggin' Thor. A hundred million Israelites slaughtered, how we gon' win this war? A Roman calendar, Greek sports, cowboys versus redskins. I'm praying for my brethren on Thor's day, giving thanks to Odin for all the land that was stolen from my forefathers, yelling out black power with shackles on, reporting live straight out of Babylon. Let's throw a feast, we gotta celebrate this robbery. They all all got eyes, but they blinded me. The curses of Deuteronomy. My people fit all the prophecies. Chapter 28, 31. Happy Thanksgiving. No need for real change. There's so many slaves living day to day. Running on the hamster wheel. FEMA camps. UN soldiers. They ain't scared to kill real life. We alive, but we dead for real. Young, it's heartless. Numb the violence. Scared to feel. We used to give them books. Now we hand them pills. Princess popping sands. Serve my elder that Millie Rock. Come and watch them dance. Put your girl on that boy and she dropped the class. Uh, y'all ain't low, but I got to ask. Are we only giving thanks because we forgot the past? Paganism, paganism. Uh, uh, why? We stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. Paganism, paganism, paganism. We stiff neck, we don't want correction, we hate to listen. Uh, yeah, why? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to fellowship with you and to grow in our knowledge of the Lord. We hope to see you next time at the Gate Call Beautiful.